The pandemic showed that there were some gaps in the regime. That's why we strengthened the protections last September to include refunds for situations outside the airline's control, such as a pandemic or a major weather event. Right now, everyone is entitled to a refund when the airlines are not able to complete the journey within a reasonable time frame. But last year, as the air sector began to recover, passenger volumes surged incredibly quickly, exposing the Bill of Rights to a lot of stress. As a result, we also saw passenger complaints increase at the Canadian Transportation Agency, leading to a significant backlog. These challenges have given us useful insight into how we can strengthen the rights and protect passengers even further. So this is exactly what we are doing. Today, I'm announcing that we are making significant changes to the air passenger rights. Je n'annonce de changement ou droit des passagers aériens. I am announcing aériens. changes to These air changes passenger rights. These changes are included in our Budget Implementation Act, Bill C-47, that was tabled in the House of Commons last Thursday, which we hope will pass soon. Once these measures are implemented, they will strengthen air passenger protection and simplify the complaint process. Among the new changes, amendments would make compensation the default unless specifically cited as a limited exception. Le compensation vont être obligatoire. Compensation will be mandatory. So, in addition to being entitled to a refund, most air passengers will be entitled to fi financial compensation. Right now, compensation for delays and cancellation is only required for disruptions caused by the airline and which is not a safety issue. With the new changes, we would be combining the current three categories, which are disruption within the airline's control, within the airline's control but necessary for safety, and outside the control of the airline, into a single category where everyone would be entitled to compensation except for a clear list of exceptions. These exceptions would be established by the Canadian Transportation Agency through a regulatory process within which Canadian and industry stakeholders are consulted. This means there will be no more loopholes where airlines can claim a disruption is caused by something outside of their control for a security reason when it's not. And it will no longer be the passenger who will have to prove that he or she is entitled to compensation. It will now be the airline that will need to prove that it does not have to pay for it. This will make the process much simpler and push the burden of proof onto the airlines. The changes in the legislation would also include implementing standards of treatment, like paying for your food if your flight is cancelled or delayed due, for example, to a snowstorm. Since last summer, we also saw how lost baggage impacted passengers. That's why our proposed changes to the Bill of Rights would put in place new requirements which will be announced in the next few weeks for delayed and lost baggage. Il y a aura de nouvelles exigences There will be new requirements for lost baggage. require airlines to establish an internal process for dealing with air travel claims and they will be required to manage passenger complaints within 30 days. We're also proposing to hold airlines more accountable by allowing the Canadian Transportation Agency to recover the cost of air passenger complaints from the airlines, giving, airline, giving airlines a stronger incentive to address complaints directly with travelers as soon as possible. Of course, we expect these measures will reduce the number of complaints referred to the agency, but for those that do reach the agency, we're proposing to make the process even more efficient. Under these amendments, the CTA would clear air passenger complaints sooner by replacing its current adjud adjudication process for resolving disputes with a simplified process completed by their staff. 
These changes also build on the nearly $76 million over three years in added funding I recently announced to the agency to help clear the current backlog of complaints. Finally, to ensure even greater accountability, we are strengthening the CTA by increasing the maximum fines they can impose from $25,000 to $250,000. Les amants seront plus Fines élevés. will be higher. I know there may be some, mostly airlines, who claim that we are unfairly targeting them with these new measures to hold them accountable. First, let me be very clear. These measures are not meant to demonize airlines. Thousands of airline employees go to work every day committed to doing their best to provide excellent service to their customers. Airline employees have been going through an unprecedented period of challenges, and I know that they are doing their best under extraordinary circumstances. It's important, though, to acknowledge that when a passenger purchases a ticket, that is a transaction between a passenger and the airline. So it is the airline's responsibility to make sure they uphold their obligations to their customers. There's a significant imbalance in power here between airlines and their customers, where customers could suffer considerable consequences if a service they purchased was not delivered properly. I believe there is a role for government to fix this imbalance and help ensure that passengers are protected. I also want to be clear on another matter. We are still pursuing shared accountability across the sector by imposing new public data sharing requirements for airports and air carriers. We will also be requiring all those within the air transportation system to share more data with one another to ensure the best possible experience for passengers. More data sharing and greater transparency will enable the creation of a more accountable system for everyone. Stay tuned for additional measures to be announced in the coming months. Thank you again. Merci.